Deuteronomy 8. After an entire chapter about genocide, which contradicts the only commandment that matters, it's time for the Bible to remind us about the other rules, like how everyone should fear him. You might have thought we covered all this so we can finally move on, but nope, gotta get a refresher. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know, then, in your heart, that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Remember when God tortured you, but then drowned you in quail? That was fun, right? And remember how the writers never talked about your shoes and clothes? That's because everything about your shoes and clothes was perfect, and not because they forgot. And remember how we said don't kill people, and then killed people, and then said don't kill people again? It's one of those. I still can't get over the shoes. He said your feet didn't swell in 40 years. But there were kids on this journey. How would their feet not grow in 40 years? <laughs> Are they only adults from like the waist up? They must have needed new shoes very often. My kids go through shoes every couple of months. And no one got blisters? Really? It's also kind of cruel to call these past four decades a test. A god who supposedly knows what's in everyone's hearts should not have to test them. He should just know. And yet he just put everyone through an ordeal for decades just for funsies. Observe the commands of the Lord your God walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. That sounds like they're being sent to a mine to do hard labor. But yay, bread and water, totally worth 40 years of desert wandering. And how is no one questioning the whole digging copper out of the hills thing? That's by definition a finite resource. It's not gonna last thousands of generations, much less forever. When you have eaten and are satisfied, Praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your hearts will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your ancestors, as it is today. Dude, they are not going to forget the guy who constantly tortures them. Thanks for the snakes and scorpions, by the way. Do you remember the snakes and scorpions? God makes it sound like he saved them from the creatures. But in Numbers 21, 
God sent snakes to bite people and killed them because they complained about being hungry. And we know about the water from the hard rock. That's why Moses is gonna die. And is that the second time in two passages God's reminding them about manna? <laughs> 40 years and God had one success story and he's never gonna let anyone forget it. God is like Al Bundy scoring four touchdowns in a high school football game and then never letting it go. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Thanks for threatening us, God. Please don't destroy the thing you gave us because you love us, which we suffered for because you think we hold a grudge. This chapter is so unnecessary. It's rehashing things God has already said, all because the things God does would make any reasonable person think God cannot be trusted. And they're right! But God keeps coming back and saying, trust me, or else. And everyone just goes along with it because that is how the mafia works. God is the good cop and the bad cop, and we're supposed to love him and or fear him. It is so much easier to just be an atheist.